Hello everybody, today we are going to be doing the new Perilous Moons content, the three new bosses, all the way down here underneath the Theomat in Camtorum, I don't know, the Napotzli, whatever it's called. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to get there. All you have to do is a teleport to Civitas Illa Fortis, aka the new place. I forget what it's called, but you have to complete the new quest about entering Twilight to use these birds. You use the bird to fast travel to the Hunter's Guild, and then you run northwest from here for quite a ways, so I hope you brought your graceful. Now as far as gear requirements go, all you want to do is bring your most defensive gear. A lot of people will say that you need three pieces of Barrow's armor and you're good to go. You don't technically need fire cape, you don't technically need a fury, just bring the most defensive things you can with your best slash, crush, and stab weapon. But if you just want to bring a whip and say screw it, then be my guest. You might be noticing I'm bringing Nezi Helm and Fighter Torso. If you don't need the defense, you can start switching out for strength gear over time. If you really want to be sweaty, you can bring multiple different switches. Like some people like to bring a Crystal Halberd for the Blood Moon boss, because the Blood Moon is weak to Slash. Um, my first 15 runs or so, I did it with just the Whip and the Dragon Dagger, and I didn't think anything of it. But if you really want those minimal DPS increases, then feel free to bring extra switches. So I've got my best crush, stab, slash weapons up here. I have my farming cape for teleporting out. So here we are in the, uh, the beginning room. A lot of people get confused with where to go. You can use these yellow squares to direct you around the place. You know, for the last few days I've been trying to figure out the fastest way to do this, the most efficient route. A lot of people like going northwest and going this way and catching lizards compared to fishing. However, personally, I find that the route you take going this way is faster. Even if fishing isn't technically faster than hunting. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then don't worry about it. But basically, you just run up here. untag all those but I'll retag them later you'll see why so here we are at the cooking stove you can repair not repair you can restore your run energy by clicking make cuppa which is very nice because there's a lot of running involved okay just grab a fishing supplies and a herb lore supplies do you like Varlamore leave a comment below and tell me how you feel Come over here and get two Moonlight Grubs and crush them. That's really all you're going to need. And then you come over here and you fish. If this is your first time doing this, you will want to just fill up your inventory with the fish. However, that does take a long time and you do not need all that food on the very first fight if you know what you're doing. So me personally, I'm only going to take six. Six fish, there we go, and then we click. Oops, I took seven. So I'm going to cook my fish, and then we're going to get on to the first boss, the e Eclipse Moon. The Eclipse Moon is weak to stab weapons, so that's why I have my dragon sword. However, there's also an interesting mechanic where during one of its special attacks, you can hit it as fast as you can click, and it doesn't matter what weapon you're using. So I also bring my hardest hitting, slowest weapon just for this fight. This boss has two different mechanics, one of which where you have to run around and hide behind a ball. The other one requires you to click on a bunch of phantasmal, I don't know, decoys of his? I'm not sure. Anyway, it looks like the clicking phase has just began. I made a pretty huge mistake by not drinking a potion before the fight because it is a divine super combat potion essentially, so do not forget to drink one dose of potion before you enter the fight. So I'm going to equip my dragon axe, 
And as soon as he spawns, you just need to click where he is, and you'll see your character attack. As soon as you see your character attack, or you see the XP drop appear, you can click to the next one. If you do not do this properly, you will get hit by him. Looking at him deflects his attack and also allows you to hit him. As you see, I just got hit a couple times there. Prayer is really straightforward. Just use your best offensive prayer. Uh, for me, that's gonna be piety. You don't actually need protect from melee. At least that's the word on the street right now. Everyone's telling me I don't need it. Oops, I actually forgot to switch from my zombie axe back to my dragon sword, but as you can see, it doesn't really matter. This one's a little tricky. You have to stay hidden behind this ball while he shoots loads at you. Oops, I got sniped in the eye. I've only got four tiles marked, and it's just to indicate the uh, the corner of the path that the ball takes. Once you've made a full rotation around the room, then you're good to go. Just keep standing on this circle. You always want to stand on the circle if it's available to you, because if you don't, you will be taking lots of damage. I'm gonna eat one food. Turn my prayer back on. That was really delayed. This is my first run of the entire day, by the way. So I'm a little rusty. I didn't even use any special attacks either. Oh, and here we are in the clicky phase. So I'm gonna put Dragon Axe out again. And again, just click the tile he spawns on. I don't think you actually have to be that specific, but practice makes perfect, right? Might as well be perfect. You cannot kill him in this phase. As you can see, I'm constantly hitting zeros while he's chipping me away. I should probably eat. But if you get him down to one HP, then your first hit after the phase should take him out. There we go. Cha-ching. Okay, here we are at the next area. So here, you're going to want to take hunting supplies out of the crates. And you're going to want to run over here right away and click on each of these rocks once to put a rope trap in between them. Rustle the bushes so moss lizards come out. And then you just come pick them up. Easy as that, right? Now, you're going to want to retrap the rocks just so you do this twice. This will give you six lizards, which should pretty much fill up your inventory with food. And that is why I only caught six fish earlier, because the lizards, as you see here, or as you will see when I cook them, they sort of multiply, and they'll sometimes get cooked up into two or three foods, like that. And here's the cool part, so you're going to want to hold on, you can drop your big fishing net at this point, just hold on to the rope, two potions, and your butterfly net. Now. To restore our prayer, you are going to want to catch these Moonlight Moths here to save on prayer potions. One thing you can do to make that easier is to tag all Moonlight Moths so you see them very easily. Now, in between each fight, you just take your Hunter Net and you catch a couple of these, and I'm full prayer. I never needed to actually drink a potion. However, what I should mention is you should drink a potion as soon as you make them because drinking a potion boosts your stats. I believe they act as a super combat potion. Pretty crazy. So that is totally my fault for not drinking that sooner. This is the blue moon, the ice moon as I call it, and he is weak to crush. As you can see, I have these tiles marked which reminds me what they're weak to. I used to use the cudgel here, but I recently upgraded to the zombie axe, so I'm gonna put that down. The blue moon has two special attacks, one of which is kind of going on right now. Uh, your weapon will get kidnapped and frozen in ice, and you have to punch the ice. It's really simple. You click the ice to punch it, and then you back up to dodge the ice. You punch the ice, and then you back up to dodge it. It's super simple. 
The only other special attack is you'll start in the center of the room like this. Let's pretend this is the boss fight. And there's two braziers on either side of the room, and they will be unlit, and you'll have to traverse the room. Oh, here, look, I'll show you. It just started. So you need to run to one side of the room to the other to light the braziers. However, these icy tornadoes will hit you and hurt you if you're unlucky. There we go. So if one hits you, it will disable your run, which makes traversing this annoying. However, to counter that, as soon as your run is turned off, just hold control and start spam clicking. You can thank me later. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> re-equip an actual weapon and I'm gonna start fighting the blue moon, the blue moon IPA. Like I said, this one is weak to crush, so just take out your best crush weapon, pray piety, smack it, and step on the circles, and you should do great. Now here we are at the second special attack. You just punch the ice, back up, punch the ice, back up. It's not always the same tile that you back up to, so be ready for that. Punch the ice, back up. Punch the ice. Nope, I don't need to be doing this anymore. Now I can come do an emote. Because I'm really funny. Alright, back to the circle. Back to smacking. Let's turn our prayer back on. As you can see, I'm still doing really good on food and health. There we go, that's Blue Moon down. Now, I'm going to make a cuppa. You want to remember to make cuppa after each one, just in case you had to run a lot, because there is a lot of running. Now we're just going to come catch our Blue Moon Moths, and we're off to the next fight, which is right here. Just east of us is the Blood Moon. Now the Blood Moon is weak to Slash, so you will want to bring your best Slash weapon, uh, for me, that's the Abyssal Whip, and if you really want to be sweaty, then you can use your Crystal Halberd or Dragon Halberd special attack, because that is a slash weapon compared to the Dragon Dagger, which is a stab weapon. The Blood Moon has two special attacks, uh, one of which is really straightforward, and one of which is really kind of complicated, or at least on the surface. For Blood Puddles, one of them, you just have to walk around the room on all these pools of blood that appear and don't step in the blood. It's that simple. Now for the other special attack, Jaguars, that's a little more complicated. Here we go, it looks like, okay, blood puddles just began. So I'll show you what that looks like. Super simple. You just don't step on the blood. I stepped on it right there and it didn't even do anything. So the Jaguar phase, when that happens, you'll have to stand on your circle in, in the room and start attacking a Jaguar, which will restore your HP every time you attack it, I believe. And then the Jaguars will melee attack you once every five ticks. You have to actually sidestep that. Here we go. Back up. I don't think I did that right. I think I dodged it right there, dodged it right there. So as you can see, if you do it right, you won't get hit very much, which is good because every time this boss hurts you, it will heal. So if you have lower stats or you're a lower level player, then messing up the Jaguar phase will be a pain. But if you have good stats, then it won't really matter. Before I forget, I'm gonna use my special attacks. Got a nice 42-0, 2113, not great. And a 2717, I'll take that. Now this Blood Moon is really the only only one of the blood I'm sorry, one of the only bosses. This Blood Moon boss is the only boss in Perilous Moons, I think, that really gives me 
It doesn't give me trouble. This is the only boss in Perilous Moons that is capable of killing most players, I would say. Eclipse Moon is a joke and has a special attack that essentially allows you to completely destroy it. And Blue Moon is really straightforward. Here we are at Jaguar phase again. Hit. Back up. Hit. Back up. Hit. Back up. Oops, I was a little too early. Hit. Back up. And I'm still not really sure exactly how to do that, so... Oops. I was way too early on that. I thought the special attack was over. My stupid ass. I just heard someone use Dragon Claws. And look, there we go. Blood Moon is defeated. Turn my prayers off. I'm gonna make a cup of tea. And I'm gonna run south to the rewards chest because that's all we have to do. I'm gonna catch Moonlight Moths on my way because why would I wanna waste time creating more potions? Now, I'm actually not sure on the hunter level required to do this, but I do know that it takes 85 hunter to even catch these without a net. Kind of a steep requirement, uh, so I guess I technically don't know what it takes to catch them without the net. So if you cannot catch those with a net, you will need to keep making potions, which isn't a problem. Here we are, and of course, never lucky. Now, when you want to restart, you simply go north, and you will be right at the starting area again. Here we are where I caught fish and made supplies earlier, but my inventory is already nice and full, so I'm just going to eat a fish and go right in. Now just a reminder, here we are again at Eclipse Moon, which is weak to stab weapons. But it has that one phase, the illusion phase, where you can smack it as fast as you can click, pretty much, with the strongest weapon you can bring. So I use Dragon Sword for the fight, and Zombie Axe exclusively for that special attack. Let's do it. Alright, here we are. Just normal part of the fight. No special attacks right now. I'll use a Dragon Dagger special attack, why not? For a nice 12-0. Alright, when he pulls you into the center, pull out your strongest weapon and get ready to click. Excellently done. As you can see, this is supposed to be a special attack for him, but it's almost like a special attack for us. Look at that massive damage output. Just completely dropping the guy's HP bar. And look, the fight's pretty much over now. Just one more hit. I didn't even need to switch back. Okay, maybe I did. <laughs> there we go. That is Eclipse Moon. And then we're back here in the Hunter area. Uh, I'm going to equip my net. I am going to just catch a butterfly. Now as you can see, my inventory is starting to empty out. You know, I've still got six doses of potions, and I've still got a bit of food. I'm going to catch these lizards right here, and I'm not going to cook them. Just because I want to do this as quickly as I can, I'll catch the lizards and just move on. And then maybe after the next boss fight or something, I will cook them. You know what? Since I have so much inventory space... Oops, I kind of messed up right there. Since I have so much inventory space, I am actually going to catch six of the lizards. Just so I can completely refill my inventory next time I need to. Now... Again, here we are at the blue moon, which is weak to crush. I'm going to change this label to say Zombie Axe. Zombie Axer. 
So Eclipse Moon, weak to stab. Blue Moon, weak to crush. Blood Moon, weak to slash. Let's get in here. Let's turn on Piety. Now here's a pro tip. I'm not really sure how this affects the game, or the boss, or the rewards, or anything. But for this tornado phase, you don't actually have to do anything. You can just stand still. I didn't understand this at the time, but by not lighting the braziers, you will allow yourself to get colder. And if you get too cold, you might take some extra damage or lose an attack cycle. So up to you if you want to do that. Uh, I'm not really sure about the implications behind that. I don't know if that affects how drop rates work or anything like that. So just keep that in mind. Because I know some raids have that MVP feature where if you do the most damage or if you play the best, you'll get the drop. See, I don't know. And like, for example, this boss, or this special attack, you don't have to do anything either. It's not like I'm gonna have my weapon stolen forever if I just don't release it from the ice. So see what happens if I just stand here and do nothing. Oh look, I got my zombie axe back. Looks like all that happens was you take 12 damage if you decide not to do all that. Is that worth it? Probably not. Oh, yowchies. I kinda got clapped up right there. Oh, I see what's happening. <laughs> so disregard everything I just told you. That's the first time I've actually been so afflicted by cold it prevented me from attacking. If you don't do those blue moon boss mechanics, you'll take extra damage and your character will get so cold that they miss an attack cycle. I'm going to eat my food and I'm going to cook some of these lizards just because I like having a nice full inventory. There we go. Look how nice that worked out. Full potions, full food, ready to go. Here we are again at the Blood Moon boss, which is weak to Slash. I'm going to eat one of my foods now just to make room for my second weapon. Looks like we're in the middle of Blood Puddles. I'm going to prepare my Crystal Halberd special attack preemptively. 28 and 8, not great. 33, 24, that's a little better. And 20, 0, okay, not great either. Just look at how much this boss heals off of you. I feel like if you start wearing things with strength bonus and prayer bonus over defensive bonus, this boss is really where you're gonna feel it the most. Blood Moon has the absolute best chance of defeating you compared to any of the other moon bosses. But as long as you know what you're doing, keep moving properly, and heal when you need to, it should be okay. Still praying. I've got another special attack incoming. Not great. Look at how much this boss is healing. Alright, looks like we get to do blood puddles again. Pretty straightforward, just keep moving. I like to just click on tiles that I know just broke. If you do that, then you're way less likely to walk into a tile that's actively forming, right? You really do gotta move quickly, I feel like. Not standing on that circle will... will hurt. 
and I have got sucked into doing another Blood Jaguars phase because I'm too slow. And I also have to drink a dose of potion in this fight because I'm too slow. I try to restore all my prayer with the Moonlight Moths. If I drink potions, then that creates extra steps where I have to recreate more potions, right? And if I'm trying to do it as quick as possible, then the net really is the best way to do it. Okay, and that was the Blood Moon done again. Uh, restore my run energy. Let's catch some moths while we run to the rewards chest. You know, I actually don't think I need to, because outside the rewards chest, there's so many more moths. You know, right on the way to the Eclipse Moon. So you just come through here, claim your chest, and you always want to bank everything. Never lucky. Just click bank all if you want to keep grinding, and then keep running north to go again. That's what my tile says. Go again. Here we are with all these moths. And like I said, you can just run right back in to Eclipse Moon and do it all over again. That is how you do Perilous Moons. All three bosses, Eclipse Moon, Blue Moon, and Blood Moon. That is the order I do them in. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions on how I could speed the route up myself, please leave me a comment below. Anyway, thank you very much. Good luck with your lunar chests, and have a great day, everybody. Peace!